Welcome. My name is Martin Kleindl and I am responsible for Alice Fashion and Replenishment at Alice Retail. In this webinar, I will talk about store stock redistribution and how this functionality can help you increase sales and to reduce markdowns. We will touch base different methods and strategies how we can redistribute items across our store network and see this functionality also live in Alice NAV. This webinar will be recorded and we will send you the link to the recording after the webinar. I will take questions at the end of the session. Please use the chat window in the GoToWebinar to send me your questions, comments or feedback. If there is not enough time to cover all questions, I will respond to you via email. So, what is store stock redistribution? Store stock redistribution is a new feature in Alice NAV to replenish items in stores from other stores. This is needed when all our items are distributed across our store network and only few or no more items are left in the warehouse. Then we want to redistribute items from stores with existing stock to stores with high demand. The aim of this functionality is to achieve the following business goals. First, to increase sales in your stores. Second, to reduce markdowns at the end of the season or at the end of the life cycle of the product. And then to increase availability in the stores and of course to reduce stockouts. Store stock redistribution calculates the current stock and the future demand for the items and variants across all your stores. Then, in a second step, it detects stores with either existing out-of-stock situations or expected out-of-stock situations. These are out-of-stock situations which will show up at the end of the season or the life cycle or at the end of our calculation horizon. We calculate the expected out-of-stock situations from the current stock and the expected sales demand based on sales history. Stores that are selling below expectation have excessive stock. If the store is continuing to sell like that, then there is a high risk to be overstocked at the end of the life cycle. This means you need to apply markdowns and discounts to sell the item and you will lose money by doing that. Just think about smartphones. When a new model is introduced, nobody wants to buy old models unless there are heavy discounts. So it's important to sell these phones in time to maximize profit. When we have categorized the stores into stores with demand and stores with supply, then we proceed to the next step. Here, the system proposes transfer orders to move items to the stores that have demand. Those transfers are usually between stores, but you can also include warehouse locations with different strategies like ignore, force or prioritize. Most importantly, we measure the expected sales increase and compare this with the redistribution cost, which is the cost of transportation between the stores or the warehouse locations. So you can always see if it's economically wise to transfer the items or to keep them where they are. A key element in store stock redistribution is the redistribution matrix. This matrix defines the allowed routes between the stores or warehouses for redistribution. Only routes that are defined here will be considered in the calculation. This is used when you want to avoid transfers between different countries, but you want to allow transfers between cities and stores in the same country.
This matrix holds also information like redistribution cost, distance and duration between the locations. This information is used to calculate the optimal routes between the locations for multiple items. The redistribution matrix is built on the concept of hierarchies and hierarchy relations and therefore allows an easy and fast maintenance with versions and history, a hierarchical and top-down definition of the routes, easy maintenance of the transportation cost, and the calculation of distance and duration between two locations with Bing Maps API. So let's have a look at the redistribution matrix in LSNAV. To work with the redistribution matrix, we go to LS Retail, Replenishment, Automatic to Redistribution. The first ingredient for the redistribution matrix is the hierarchies. In the hierarchies, we define which locations should be considered in the redistribution calculation. The hierarchy is a tree structure that holds different nodes to define your store, warehouse and location hierarchy. This is very flexible and you can have as many levels as you want. In my example, I have built a hierarchy with all my warehouses and you can see here in the lower areas the warehouse locations. And then I have created a group for regions, for Europe, APEC, Middle East and Africa, USA, and within Europe, Europe North, Central and South, with some countries and cities in there. But it's up to you how detailed you want to create this hierarchy. And it's also very easy to maintain it. So if I want to add an additional country, so I select the node, say add a child node, and just add Portugal in here. So I have added a new country and now I can add all the stores within Portugal that should be considered in the redistribution. And I can also use the add stores report to easily import multiple stores if I want to do that. So the hierarchy decides which locations, warehouse locations or store locations should be considered in the redistribution. To define the allowed routes between the locations, we use the hierarchy relations. In the hierarchy relations, we present two trees, one to the left, which is the locations we are sending from, and on the right, the location or the location hierarchy we are sending to. So, and now it's very easy to set up the possible routes. In Central Europe, we have the countries Austria and Germany, and they are quite close together. So we allow that it's possible to have a redistribution between all the locations and stores within Central Europe. So I mark Central Europe on the left and on the right, and I create this relation. What we see here is this check mark. And this means that we have now established the possibility to send from our stores to our stores in Central Europe. Let's have a look at Europe North. We have here Iceland and Sweden. There is quite some distance in between and it's difficult to send items back and forth. So we will not allow redistribution between those countries, but within Sweden, this is allowed, but we don't allow a transfer from Sweden to Iceland. And within Iceland, we also support redistribution. In Iceland, we see that there are multiple cities. We have Reykjavik, Kopavogo and Keflavik. And due to the inheritance, this rule that I have set up is inherited to all the other cities. So now we have established the allowed routes. The second thing that we do here in the hierarchy relation is to define the transportation or the redistribution cost. And this is done in the field redistribution cost and redistribution cost reverse. So within our stores in Iceland, it cost us 120 units in local currency 
uh, to transport. But since Keflavik is a little bit further away from the other cities, we can define here very easily that to send items from Keflavik to Reykjavik is a little bit more expensive. So it's 150. And when I update this, it will, you see that it's also updating the reverse direction as well. This is controlled by the field redistribution cost is symmetric. So this means sending back and forth comes with the same price. If I deactivate this for Keflavik and Kopavogur, then if this would be 140, then you see that the reverse cost is not updated automatically and we could have a different price. So it's very easy with this top-down approach with inheritance to create the possible routes and also the cost that will be um, created when we send the truck between the stores. The last step that we have to do is to click the button update redistribution matrix. When this is done, we can have a look at the matrix. And the redistribution matrix is a different presentation of this information. We see here the locations we are sending from, and here the locations we are sending to, and we see the redistribution cost that will occur when we have this transport. We can also show details to see all the possible locations that can be used as destination when we send from location S001. But it's not only the cost that we see here. We see also the distance. This is the direct distance between those cities and the distance when we consult the route planner or the duration that it takes to send the items from A to B. And we see this is shown in kilometers and in minutes. So how is this calculated? To calculate this, we need geodata, longitude and latitude set up on the location. So on our location card, we have two new fields, latitude and longitude, which represent the geodata for this location. You can manually populate this field, but what we have integrated is a Bing Maps API. So when you click this button, Bing Maps API will be called and it will calculate the longitude and latitude from the address information. So when the address information is known for our locations, then we can use the action calculate route for distance and time. And when I click this button, then the distance and duration for those combinations that we see here will be calculated. The units of measure, kilometers and minutes can be set up in our Bing Maps API setup page where you can define the units if it's kilometers or miles or the duration if it should be shown in minutes or hours. Finally, it's important to say that you can have multiple redistribution matrices at the same time. And this is then defined in the item redistribution matrix where you can have a matrix for your fashion items and electronic items because you have different routes set up. And then you assign this to product groups, item category or division code. As you have seen, the maintenance of this matrix is very simple. And due to the concept of inheritance, even companies with a lot of stores can do this with small effort. Let us have a look at the redistribution process. The process can be divided into three main phases, preparation, calculation, and execution. In the preparation phase, we calculate a snapshot of the current stock situations across all items, variants, and stores. This is called the replenishment item quantity. This is the same snapshot that is used for purchase and transfer replenishment journals. So if you use replenishment and redistribution together, this snapshot needs to be calculated only once. In the calculation phase, we have four steps. First, 
We calculate the redistribution stock and demand for our items and variants across all stores. Then we calculate the optimal trips, which are transfer orders to fulfill the demand. Next, we calculate thresholds, which are business rules to avoid uneconomical transfer orders. This is an optional step. And finally, we create the transfer orders from the redistribution journal. The first two phases, preparation and calculation, can be run manually or fully automated via LS scheduler. Finally, in our last phase, we execute the transfer orders, picking and shipping in the supplying stores and receiving in the destination stores. Let us have a detailed look at the step two, the calculation of the redistribution stock and demand. In this city, we operate six stores. The store in the center is our flagship store and it's selling beyond expectation. Some of the items are already sold out and therefore we classify this store as understocked for those items. We have a redistribution demand. In the stores two and three, the sales performance for some items is below expectations. Therefore, we are overstocked and have a redistributable stock for other stores. Store stock redistribution provides three methods to calculate redistributable stock and demand. First, sales demand, which is based on sales history and expected sales demand. Then stock balancing, which balances existing stock across the entire store network. And then reorder point maximum inventory, which allows you to define minimum and maximum stock values um, for the calculation of the redistribution. Let's have a look at the methods in detail. The sales demand method calculates the demand until the calculation horizon and is based on sales history. The calculation horizon is defined in the redistribution journal and is usually the season end date or any other date. We have introduced a new concept called life cycle curve to predict demand based on a known sales pattern. A buffer value allows you to keep a safety stock in the supplying stores. This buffer value prevents the full assignment of redistributable stock to other stores. The sales demand calculates the estimated inventory at the calculation end date, which is the current inventory minus the expected demand. The stock out percentage tells you how many of your items or variants are not in stock in the stores anymore. Sell through percentage is an indicator how much of your inventory at the start date has been sold already until today. This is a very good indicator to understand if your sales are above or below your planned sales expectations. Redistributable stock and demand tell you the quantity that can be provided by underselling stores and how much is demanded from overselling stores. Store stock redistribution will exclude items automatically when no redistribution demand or stock exists, but you can manually exclude items or locations from further processing. Let's have a look at the redistribution journal and this calculation method in the system. The calculation takes place in the redistribution journals and those can be found in replenishment, automatic redistribution replenishment journals. The calculation is similar as in the replenishment journals. So we press the add items to journal and preview button and here we can set up some major parameters for this calculation. The most important parameters are the start and the end date because they define the calculation horizon for the redistribution. 
we can apply a season code and if we do that then the start date and the end date will be taken from the season. We can apply multiple filters to exclude and include items and locations if we want. So let's calculate our redistribution. And when this calculation is done, we can see in the preview the result for the items. So let's have a look at the information that we get here. We have here a list of our items and the stock out percentage is a very good indicator if we have already existing out of stock situations in the store. So here we see the stock out is 20% and if we do the lookup, then we see in which stores, which colors and which sizes are not existing anymore. The sales rule is a very good indicator how well our sales is going. So and let me sort this result in a way that we see the sales rule from the highest to the lowest value. The sales rule describes how much of the items that we had available at the start date have been sold until today. And because we have a start and the end date, we can calculate the expected sales rule depending on where we are in between. So in our case, we should have sold about 60% of our items. The cocktail dress shows a sales rule of 93%. This means we are selling above our expectation. And if we continue to sell with our currently effective inventory of 67, then we will end up at an inventory of minus 575 at the end date. So we will run out of stock very soon for that item. So for this example, we would need to find a substitute that we have items in the stores that our stores are not active. On the lower end, we have the Elsa Oslo dress and we see that the sell through is very low. So we are far, far below our expectations. What we can expect here is that at the end of our calculation horizon, we will have excessive stock available and then we need to ship it to outlet centers or wherever. So here, very likely, we will need to apply markdowns or discounts to increase the sales so that we don't end with excessive stock at the end of the season or the life cycle. But let's have a look at the items here in between. For example, this country style dress. We see here the sales rule is above expectation. And if we look further to the end, we see there is a redistributable stock and the demand. So 415 pieces are requested from stores where there is some demand. So those stores need some sizes, otherwise they will run out of stock until the end date. And we can see that here very easily, we have an effective inventory of 20, but there is a higher demand until end date. So therefore we have a redistribution demand. On the other side, we have 32 pieces available in stores that are not selling that well. So they have still some effective inventory and the demand until end date is lower. So they have something that they can supply to the other stores. So, and this is the way how this is calculated. But this demand is calculated in two ways. One way would be like here for the dotted leaf dress. So we see there is no life cycle curve attached. So this means we just take the effective inventory, calculate how many days are left until the end date. And if this is multiplied with the average daily sales, then we can calculate the inventory at the end date. But then we have the life cycle. And this is a new concept that we have introduced. And you can see this if you see this life cycle drawing here for this item. A life cycle curve describes a sales pattern, a sales behavior. And this is attached to items or item groups. So here we have a life cycle for women's clothes for 12 weeks uh, in summer. So it's 12 weeks and we see the periods and the sales distribution across those periods. So this means if you look at the aggregated life cycle curve, when we are 
in the week number eight, then we should have sold 79.6% of our items if our sales is according to the expected sales. How is this weight and share calculated? You can of course populate this manually, but we provide functionality where this life cycle can be calculated from previous periods. So you can take that from a previous season or previous time, calculate this based on turnover or quantity for items or item groups. And this is what we expect, how this is used, that you take product groups, comparison periods, and then calculate the sales behavior for some items, and then you assign the life cycles to those items. There is this exclude field. So the system will automatically exclude items if there is no redistributable stock or demand given. But you can, of course, also manually exclude items if you don't want to have them in the trips calculation and you can use the exclude functionality up here. We have seen that sales demand is a powerful method to calculate what needs to be redistributed across the stores. Let's have a look at the other methods. The stock balancing method calculates the redistribution based on current inventory in the stores. First, it calculates the average inventory for the selected stores, and then it balances the stock equally across the stores. This method calculates the average effective inventory and also the highest and lowest inventory values for the items. Standard deviation is an indicator how volatile the inventory is distributed across the stores. Read stock and demand tell you the quantity that can be provided by underselling stores and how much is demanded from overselling stores. The reorder point maximum inventory method calculates the redistribution based on current inventory in the stores with upper and lower limits. First, it calculates the current inventory for the selected stores. If the inventory is above the maximum inventory, the store is overstocked and we have a redistributable stock. If the inventory is below the reorder point, the store is understocked and has a demand. Reorder point and maximum inventory are taken from the item or the item store records which allows you to define this value on item, variant, and store level. So you have seen now the three powerful methods to calculate the demand and excessive stock in the stores. Let's continue with the calculation of the optimal routes between the stores, what we call the TRIPS. The TRIPS calculation supports the following redistribution strategies least number of trips. This strategy will minimize the number of trips between the stores. Least cost. This strategy will optimize the trips calculation based on the redistribution matrix and it will consider the redistribution cost field. It will always pick the cheapest routes first. And then we have shortest distance direct, shortest distance route, shortest duration route. These three strategies consult the redistribution matrix to consider stores with the shortest distance in between or the shortest transportation time. The result of the TRIPS calculation is shown in the redistribution journal TRIPS page. This is an overview of the calculated TRIPS with the following information from two location expected sales improvement, redistribution cost, which is the transfer cost between the stores, and then quantity, weight, cubage, sales amount, cost amount, and profit amount. You can, of course, try out different strategies like least duration or least cost, and then compare the result 
and pick the strategy which fulfills your needs best. So let's have a look at the trips page in Alice NAV. From the preview page, we can very easily calculate the journal lines and the trips. We click the add items to journal button to do that. So after this, we see the journal lines, which describe for each items, the quantity that should be transferred. But let's have a look at the trips. The trips page gives us a summary about the transfer orders that will be created from locations to locations. We see here information about the redistribution cost and the expected sales increase. And by comparing these values, we can also take decisions. In this example, we have a transfer from store one to store three. The cost is 120 and the expected increase is 928. So we could say this is not enough and this is not enough. So for for this time, we will not transfer the items. They will just be kept in the stores, but maybe we do that later. What you have seen is a two-step approach from the journal where we calculated the preview and then in a second step, we calculated the trips and the journal lines. This can be set up if you want to have it in one step. And this setup is done in the field create journal lines where you can choose between the calculation of the preview only or the journal lines together. So if we have selected this option and if we just empty this once more and if we now press this button with the calculation report, it will calculate the preview and the trips and the journal lines in one step. So let's revisit our process diagram. We have calculated the demand and supply in the stores and also the trips between the stores. Thresholds compare the calculation result with defined business rules to avoid transfer orders which are not economical. Then finally, we can create the transfer orders and the stuff in the store can see those in the role center tiles and execute directly from there. Let's wrap this up. Store stock redistribution comes with the following key features. First, it provides multiple methods to calculate demand and supply in the stores. Second, you can use multiple strategies to calculate the transfer orders. It is easy to define the allowed routes with hierarchies and the redistribution matrix. And finally, it comes with integration to Bing Maps and threshold management. And what about our goals? Store stock redistribution will help you to improve your sales performance by increasing sales and reducing markdowns. The service quality will increase due to less out of stock situations and improved availability. And finally, this comes with easy maintenance for the redistribution matrix and life cycle curves. We reused existing replenishment concepts to make it easy for you to use, learn and educate. I strongly believe that this new functionality will help you a lot in improving your business.